This is The Thing About Jellyfish by Allie Benjamin. Chapter 16, How Not to Say Something Important. I'm sitting on the morning school bus. I've been thinking about a book we are reading in fifth grade, about a dog named after a supermarket, and a girl who makes friends with an old lady who had too, too much alcohol in her life. In the book, the old lady hangs empty bottles from a tree to remind her of all her mistakes. When bottles knock together in the breeze, they sound like chimes. And that is my favorite thing about this book. The image of those dangling bottles. All those terrible memories that somehow make music when they knock against one another. You see, I have my own terrible memories now. One I haven't told you about yet. That terrible morning is this. My mom and dad told me they are getting a divorce. They, tell, they told me over dinner at Elmer's, uh, Elmer Sud's Pub, which is the place with the curly fries and the tables that are so tall you need to sit on a bar stool. My mom said she helped my dad find a new apartment, a perk of being in real estate, I guess. And they both laughed, which frankly I thought was weird. I'm going to be one of those kids with divorced parents. It's bad enough that Aaron had to leave that he is off at college having all kinds of adventures without us. It's as if all the loneliness he left behind in the house just cracked the rest of our family in half. I want so badly to tell you, it is the biggest news I have ever had. But every time I've tried to tell you, I haven't been able to make the words come. You get on the bus and walk toward me, toward the seat we always sit in, and I think, maybe now, maybe this time. But when you sit down, your eyes are dancing, and you look like you have something you want to talk about. You don't even say hello. Instead, you whisper to me, who do you like? I don't know what to say. Even if that were the thing I wanted to talk about, there are lots of possible answers. I like Fluffermutter. I like you. I like Aaron. I like my dad, mom and dad. Even if I'm mad at them for getting divorced. I like the woodpecker that knocks against the tree outside my window. I like the moon when it's a thin crescent and looks like a carton drawing of a closed eye, as if the, the sky were thinking. What? Boys, I mean, who do you like? I wrinkle my nose, and I say, no one. Which I know is what girls say when they don't want to tell people why they, who they like. But in this case, it is true. I don't like anyone. Not like that. I frown at you, and I feel the chance to tell you about my parents slipping away. But you have to like someone, you say. We'll be in middle school soon. I turn those words over in my brain. Have to? There are some things I have to do. I know this. I have to eat. I have to drink water. I have to breathe. But beyond those things, it doesn't seem like there's anything else on earth that I really have to do. Even the things my mom says I must. Things like clearing the table or showering more now that I'm getting older. Still, I don't say these words out loud. <clears throat> I know that if I say them, you'll roll your eyes. You've started doing that lately, and frankly, I don't like it one bit. From the back of the bus, I hear a group of boys laughing, the way boys do when they're in a big group. So I ask, well, who do you like? It comes out sounding a bit like an accusation. I like Dylan, you say, and you blush. Well, that about floors me. Dylan, I whisper, Dylan Parker? You blush deeper now. Yeah, Dylan Parker. Tell me you're kidding. And I know I don't sound very kind when I say that, but this doesn't exactly seem like the sort of thing I should have to be kind about. Nobody should have to be kind about Dylan Parker because Dylan Parker himself is not kind. You shrug, almost apologetically. I just think he's cute. And that's when I know. Everything is about to change. It's about to get knotted up in the worst possible way. I think about my hair. Think about the angles, tangles I battle every morning. I have spent so many hours of my life trying to brush out tangles. But no matter how carefully I try to pull out the individual strands apart, they just get tighter and tighter. They cinch together in all the worst ways until they are impossible to straighten out. Sometimes there is nothing to be done but to get out a pair of scissors and cut the knot right out. But how do you cut out a knot that's formed by people? 
I don't like where this is going at all.